change your investing career, okay? But that's the thing that's probably it's probably one of the most important things you're going to learn today is that it's it's 99% of it is personality. The person your personality and that BPO agent's personality. So, let's get back to the questions here. Um the if the BPO report is very low, does the lender always use the BPO? Um this is from Alan and it says uh does the lender always use the BPO? That probably is directed to the fact that there's quality control between you and the, the lender, the clearinghouse. So can you can talk about that a little bit? Yes, I can tell you one company I work for, for example, you on the closeout sheet, a lot of times you can see if they've had prior BPOs. They say on an average property, you'll see anywhere from three to six BPOs before it is completed as well as possibly one appraisal, but a lot more brokers price opinions because they're cheaper and easier to come by. Um, but what, what will happen is if you vary too much from the previous BPOs, again, the grading system comes into play and you're going to be flagged and they're going to want to know, I, I've had this come up several times, quality control calls you, they flag the, the, the uh, file and say, we had this appraised you know, or we had a BPO done on this three months ago and it came in $75,000 higher than you. Can you substantiate and give a strong verb as to why you think that this is the value today? Right. And what would be your basis? This, you know, the funny thing about this is, is that this was no different. When the market was going up, lenders were f mm -hmm. fighting to, to lend on values as they were moving up and they're fighting to approve short sales as they're moving down. I mean, they call it loss mitigation for a reason. At the same time, um, I can tell you that that fight often uh, often washes out a lot of opportunities for them to recoup um, recoup some of those some of those losses. Um, here's some really really good questions. This is from Ray in California, and he says we kind of already touched. Will you consider repair costs? If I give you a cost estimate, we've touched on that. Um, um, w would you be willing to look or accept another realtor a realtor's BPO? Um, if I gave you a copy of it at the walkthrough for your information? Well, I think that kind of falls along the lines of if there were comps they wanted to share with me or, or want to hand to me. Um, I think what you got to bear in mind is most of the time by the eight, but it, this isn't the way it's supposed to be done, but I will tell you that most of the time it is done that by the time the agent gets to that house, they've already pulled their comps. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is your reality. They've already pulled their comps, and they they have kind of gotten in their mind the track it's going to go in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're go if it's one hundred seventy if we're flowing in the one hundred seventy five thousand dollar track, we've we've tried to stay within fifteen percent of that on our listings as well as our other sales. You know. Right. And right. if you're in a market where you've got a variety to choose from, you're kind of trying to groove in that track because right. that's going to make it the easiest way for that BPO to get it done, turn it, and get on to the next one. Right. So something that I would, I would want you all to take from that is when you're being contacted by the BPO agent to set the appointment, you may want to casually, if, if, if they're not setting the appointment for two days, if, if you're being prepared and you've got your act together, you may want to casually ask them, you know, hey, I've got some information over here for you about the home that I think you might view as important. Is it okay if I can, you know, scan this and email it to you um, and, and get it over to you before you start doing your evaluation, Okay. Um, it's a chance for you to make their life a little bit easier. Um, at the same time, um, like like she said, a lot of times they've done the work before they go out. Um, I, I, as an investor, I mean, I look at comps all day on properties I never lay eyes on, and I, I make the value determinations, and I never see those properties. It's just something that I have to do. Um, so let's see. What if a neighboring house of similar size and age sold recently for a lot of money? Are we wasting our time trying to get the BPO uh, down past that? If so, how do we get past this type of problem? If if you've got a neighboring house that's maybe even the same floor plan, but it was different circumstances, I think that in any situation you've got to take into consideration the circumstances, the condition of the home. I would go based upon if, it, if it's the same condition, if it's similar circumstances. Um, it's probably going to be difficult to overcome. If one is an REO and one's a short and one was not, we're not comparing apples to apples. And any seasoned agent knows that you want to compare apples to apples. Okay.
So I would, I would, if I were trying to approach a BPO agent about that, I would, I would casually let them know. Now you may have noticed the house next door that had the same floor plan, but I don't know if you know what kind of condition that was. An immaculate house as compared to, because they won't know. They won't have been in that other property. Right. Right. Okay. Um, here's a here's a very very good question. Obviously, one that I'm sure everybody's going to want to know is. How do you feel if I professionally and politely tell you the BPO price that I need to get the deal done? Do, do you care? Does that make any difference? Yes. It does to me. Again, it's mm -hmm. just my personal opinion. But to me, I, I guess I'm searching for that win-win again. So if you're telling me, look, this is where the deal is and this is what, it's no different than an appraisal. And mm -hmm. the appraiser knowing ahead of time what the sales price was. Right. In yeah, that that's an excellent point. Okay, whenever I, I've had a mortgage company for about eight years before I started I Visionary to fund back to back closings, and I can tell you that when you send an order over to an appraiser, it goes nowhere until there's a purchase price on it. Exactly. It's got to have a purchase and price he wants on it. Copy of that contract. Exactly, he wants a copy of the contract, and and you would think that I mean the value is the value, right? What's it matter what the purchase price is? So. Exactly. You know, that's not the case. So that is an excellent, excellent point. Don't be afraid. Again, be polite, be professional, but don't be afraid to say, "Hey, here's here here's where the offer is. Here's some comps that validate it. If we can put this together, we can help to avoid foreclosure for the homeowner and get a, get another property off the market." I've had a lot of agents when I call them to ask, um, you know, the most important ones and the ones you're going to get to talk to are when they're doing interiors. And when I call them and ask them, a lot of times they won't just make it a point of conversation. They'll say to me, oh, I'm so glad they finally are, you're finally getting out there to do this interior BPO. I've had this contract for 160000 on this house now for five months. I've been trying to get it through, you know, yada, yada, yada. Right. right, right so right. although they didn't just... Say to me, can you bring this in at one hundred sixty thousand? They have just informed me where it, where where it needs to be substantiated. Here, here's an easy point, guys. The answer is always no if you don't ask the question. All right. If you don't ask, the, is, the answer is always no. All right. This is a numbers game, um, but again, ask and you shall receive at least mm -hmm. some of the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you don't ask, you're, you're definitely not going to. Um, Jackie in Rochester, Minnesota says, if after I do my own BPO, she is also a, uh, a real estate agent, if after I do my own BPO and the result is still much higher than the price I am willing to pay, what do you do to convince the BPO agent? Um, I'm going to give my two cents worth on that in that, honestly, Jackie, that's probably not a home that you're going to have a whole lot of, of luck uh, short sailing effectively. What gives you the ability to, to, to complete a successful short sale is a variance in comparables, okay? If you pull up comparables on a home that, say, range from 350 to 450, then you have the opportunity to, there's a chance there that you might get a BPO at 350. There's also a chance you might get it at 450. If you pull up your own, if you do your own BPO with you being a, a real estate agent and the comps are all tight as a drum, there's very little chance that you're going to pull off a successful uh, short sale unless the loans are structured correctly. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a $400,000 home, okay, and the... Uh, Let's say you have a $250,000 first and a $150,000 second. $400,000 are owed on the house. The comps are tight as a drum at 380, okay? All of them tight as a drum between 370, 375, 380. Normally, that would be a tough house to short, but if you have a second lien holder, you may have and the loan is structured where the first the first the first loan when you look at the loan to value how much is the loan, the first loan, versus the value of the property? If that percentage is, say, probably 65, 60% or lower, then regardless of the comps, you have a decent sale, decent shot at achieving uh, a favorable short sale because if the first forecloses, the second gets absolutely nothing. Okay, so do you, is there anything you want to add to that? Or does that no, make sense? We've got, we've got okay. an instance right now. We know. Okay. Um, how does the bank select a BPO agent? That depends.